Now at noon, the search for a man accused of killing an Arkansas law enforcement officer is over. We have the very latest on the arrest of and the charges he now faces. Plus, as the conflict in Ukraine continues, volunteers from all over the world are ready to fight how people are answering the call. And your local shopping mall may soon look very different. We're taking a look at some of the major changes happening up uh, happening coming up at 1216. Let's start with that THV 11 update. After more than 30 hours of searching, the man accused of shooting and killing an Arkansas Department of Corrections sergeant is in custody this afternoon. The Pulaski County Sheriff's Office arrested DeMarc Jordan around 6 o'clock this morning. Authorities first encountered the 37 year old on Sunday night while responding to a welfare check. They tell us he started shooting at them before escaping. According to the Sheriff's Office, DOC Sergeant Joshua Caudell and a tracking dog found Jordan, who then shot Sergeant Caudell. Jordan now faces several charges, including capital murder and is being held without bond. He'll appear before a judge tomorrow morning. Sergeant Caudell served in the Tucker K-9 unit. He's been with the Department of Corrections since 2012. He also worked at several other Arkansas prisons during his time with the state. He leaves behind a wife and three children. Flags are at half staff this afternoon. You can see that is the case here at the state capitol that is in honor of Sergeant Caudell and West Memphis firefighter Jason Lang, who also died in the line of duty over the weekend. Well, good afternoon, Central Arkansas. Welcome to March 1st, and that means it is meteorological spring here in the Northern Hemisphere, or basically spring for weather records. And I've got spring fever. Look at these temperatures. It's only noon, and we're well into the 60s, even 70 at Little Rock, and the temperatures will continue to climb through the course of the afternoon. We've got a light wind from the south-southwest, about 5 to 10 miles per hour, and it's ushering in those warmer temperatures. So highs today topping out into the mid-70s for most of us in the state. This is well above average for this time of year, and guess what? It's only going to get better. I think temperatures may get close to 80 degrees in some locations. These 70s stick around all the way through the end of the work week. But by the weekend, that's when the weather becomes more active. Showers and storms will be returning. I'll have more details on that and the forecast for the Little Rock Marathon coming up. All right, Nathan, Governor Asa Hutchinson is set to discuss a number of topics during his weekly update this afternoon. We expect he'll talk about the fallen first responders that we just mentioned, the latest in Arkansas's fight against COVID-19 amid new CDC guidelines, and the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. You can watch that update on THV11.com and on our YouTube channel today at 1.30. Ukraine's president is calling Russia's target on the center of town in Kyiv and act of terror. Explosions rocked a government building in uh, Kharkiv's Freedom Square and nearby residential areas Tuesday morning. Ukraine officials say at least six people were killed and many others were hurt. The assault on the country's second largest city comes as Russia's 40 mile military convoy rolls closer to the capital city of Kyiv. 200 American troops landed in Germany Tuesday. They are part of NATO's eastern flank. Their arrival comes as Russia's de uh, defense minister says it will continue its Ukraine operation until its goals are achieved. Russia's invasion of Ukraine will loom over President Joe Biden's first State of the Union address and will likely be the first topic he raises tonight. The president will need lawmakers in attendance to pass an emergency spending bill to provide more arms and aid to Ukraine. There's no question that this speech um, is a little different than it would have been just a few months ago. There will be a lot of unity around helping the Ukrainians with more weapons. But the war in Ukraine will hit Americans in the pocketbook, so the president will have to deal with the economic consequences. Those possible impacts come as a new CBS News poll shows 70% of those surveyed disapprove of how the president has dealt with inflation. While governments may be reluctant to send in troops to support Ukraine, volunteers from all over the world are ready to fight. British men are among those answering the Ukrainian president's call for foreign fighters to join the war against Russia. Riley Carlson reports from London. Hello, yeah, we've come to, um, to join the Ukrainian army or whatever they're called. Leon Dawson has no military experience, but he's joining a steady stream of civilians signing up to defend Ukraine. He's collecting secondhand military gear with his friend and says they know going to the front lines could be a deadly move. We're young, strong, fit men. We can help, so why not? Waza, that's just a nickname, is a military surplus supplier. 
He's sending hundreds of old UK uniforms, similar to Ukraine's military, but is making one alteration. I'm taking all the insignia off uh, because what we don't want is any propaganda from the Russians saying there's British troops in um, obviously Ukraine when there's not. These Ukrainians have filled a truck with medical supplies, mine detectors and body armor to drive 1,200 miles to Ukraine. All right. William is a former U.S. soldier who flew to Ukraine to volunteer for the fight. So I was on a contract in the Middle East and I saw what was happening, so I'm like, screw it, let's go. Back at the embassy in London, would-be recruits keep coming. I'm 60, which means I'm just about within the range, age range I'll accept. Going to great lengths to fight for the Ukrainian cause. Riley Carlson, CBS News, London. Britain's defense secretary says only trained and experienced fighters should even consider going to Ukraine. He suggests everyone else find humanitarian ways to help. Here in Arkansas, organizations like the Salvation Army are already doing what they can to help those in need in Eastern Europe. They're working to get food, clothing, hygiene packs, and pastoral care to people who have left Ukraine and those who are staying behind to fight. And you can help. If they wrote a check and send it to us uh, and on the memo line put Ukraine, uh, we will make sure that gets forwarded on. You can also donate online. The Salvation Army is not the only one sending support. You can also send aid to organizations like the American Red Cross, UNICEF, or Doctors Without Borders. A local petting zoo is devastated after an accidental fire destroys a barn with animals inside. Cockrell's country critters lost 40 of their animals, and they're now trying to repair the damage. Ashley Godwin shows us the aftermath as they try to pick up the pieces. Tragic. We're devastated. Last Thursday, the owners of Cockrell's Country Critters Petting Zoo was getting ready for the winter weather, not knowing they would have to face an even worse event. He noticed a flame or actually dark smoke coming. A neighbor saw the barn on fire. Rescue crews came quickly to get the animals out and put out the flames, but 40 of them couldn't be saved. The owner says it was an electrical fire. Part of our family was taken away that day. People have dogs that are like family members. These were our family members. But some were saved, like Oscar the snake. It was right by where the fire started. There's all kinds of debris, soot everywhere around it. And Oscar was in there. Oscar is absolutely fine. Not any sit on him at all. It's going to be a long process to get the barn repaired with new animals. Even though the damages is in the thousands of dollars, the animals lost can never be replaced. Then they'll be forever in our hearts. Ashley Godwin, THV 11 News. Cockrells will have a benefit concert Saturday, March 26. It'll be from 11 to 6 with live music, vendors, and food trucks. The petting zoo will be open this Saturday and continue with birthday parties and events.